Well, we're actually going to start with uh, Honolulu at the beginning of the talk today. I looked through the uh, what was then the roads or the elder hostel catalog, and in Hawaii there was a listing for workers needed at the zoo, gardeners and carpenters. And I thought, oh, that sounds like it has some possibilities. And I called them and said, do you have any need for a mural artist? And they said, yes, we do. And they were very glad to receive the call. And they said, we've been wanting to have a um, mural on the fence in our Nene unit. Well, I didn't know much about the Nene. I had heard about it. Uh, are any of you familiar with the Nene? It's a strange bird that does not fly, and it, it's only native to Hawaii. So I planned ahead, packed my bags, packed art supplies, and flew to Honolulu, landed, got to the hotel, and was amazed to find there was a koi pond there with hundreds of koi. And this explained koi to visitors to the zoo. The Nene Sanctuary, found only in Hawaii, is one of the world's rarest geese. This sanctuary is a safe home for the Nene and Hawaii's native plants. Both face many challenges to survival in modern Hawaii. There was a fence made out of wood planks that was 50 feet long. They wanted me to paint 22 feet of it. Then <laughs> I planned to uh, not paint the bottom foot. I figured it'll get wet with all the rain that Hawaii has and the paint will be damaged and it'll be better if we don't uh, paint the bottom of it at all. Fortunately, other uh, elder hostel people that signed up were interested in helping paint. So that was good. Right from the beginning, we had about four or five people that were looking forward to participating in the painting. And our assignment was to paint the Nene bird, its predators, its food sources, and the geography typical of the area that it was in. We set up our paint and uh, an interesting aside here, the, the person that's painting in the middle here was very fluent in Japanese, although being an American. And a lot of the tourists that came by daily were Japanese and were quite astonished that this woman who spoke fluent Japanese was here in the Honolulu Zoo painting. Uh, and her husband happened to be blind and he was working elsewhere, so she brought him to see the uh, work. Here we have a portrait of the Nene. And here you see, uh, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that I went back the second year. to. They wanted me to come back to finish it. So I did go back the second year and finished the whole 50 foot length of the fence. We went to the education building at the zoo for our meals at lunchtime. And right outside that building, outside the windows, was this tortoise. And they said it was about 100 years old and um, blind. The keeper would come to feed it every day right about noon, right about when we were eating and um, we got to watch. It was quite fascinating. The clapping indicated his food had arrived. <laughs> In addition to all the um, work that we did, we had the time for fun also. One evening we went to the Royal Hawaiian Hotel and um, had uh, uh, Hawaiian beverages and listened to the music of, of Hawaii. And we had time for a little sense of humor also. These are three of my painters. Remember the Grant Wood painting where they're standing? We Im imitated that. 
Now you're going to recognize someone here who happens to be sitting just a few feet away from me. This is uh, Heidi Schmidt, uh, Edie. Edie Schmitz uh, fixing up food for the chimpanzees. This was a nice surprise for us. Um, the administrators of the zoo wanted to thank us and do things that would be special for us. And they planned to have us feed the chimpanzees. Well, I think it was peanut butter, uh, crushed pineapple. Um, what else was in that, Edie? Oatmeal. Oatmeal. Maybe raisins or something? Mm. <laughs> so it was quite a mixture for her to <laughs> be stirring up there. Several people worked at it. Uh, from, from getting the food prepared and some fruit cut up, we proceeded to the part of the zoo that the public never sees to be near the back of the chimpanzees area. We met their keeper who showed us some interesting things. There's a movement so that animals don't get bored at zoos. And these were the things that kept the uh, chimpanzees from being bored. In that barrel are the clothes they like to dress up in. In the other barrel there were frisbees, balls, toys for them to play with. But the biggest surprise for me was the stack of catalogs. They like to sit and look at catalogs. <laughs> a big surprise, big surprise to me. They had coached us ahead of time that we would be wearing uh, masks and gloves and we would go into their area while they were still in their winter quarters. So they weren't among us as we were in their territory. And they had coached us, oh, reach up, reach up high and stick it up high on the vertical wall. Uh, put it in crevices and logs. Um, they'll they'll uh, lift each other to get it up off the walls. Um, spread it all around. Well, so there were about 30 of us very busily putting sticky things around um, for the animals to find. Here, we left the enclosure to watch. We got up on, in the observation area. And we, of course, each of us was waiting to see when they would find the things that we had hidden. Now we're back, one of the final looks at the uh, finished fence. We had other painting projects also. This probably looks a bit familiar to many of us, and you can imagine what my inspiration was for uh, painting this mural in the education building. In the aviary building, um, we were permitted to go inside the corridors areas, the uh, closures where the animals were kept uh, were visible all around the outside of the building and in the inside of the building the public never did um, get to see. So this was a joke on my part um, to paint this bird as if it had escaped into the interior part of the building. And then this was by the door that the employees come in inside again inside the building with the bird of paradise plant featured. Now we have another picture of the big mural with the you can see the extent to which it went down the other this was year two for the project. Another project that I was asked to work on was this eight foot tall fiberglass giraffe. He needed his reticulation marks repainted. <laughs> now another thank you gift to us from the uh, administrators was the chance to feed the giraffes as a thank you. And there were about six of the giraffes and about 30 of us there with branches from trees um, being fed. Their tongues are, are 10 inch or 22 inches long. That was quite amazing to see. And this happened to be at a time when my family had arrived. We were going on a cruise at the end of the, my time there for the um, 
elder hostel, and that, that's my grandson who was very happy to be feeding the uh, chimpanzees also. Now we're back in Oakland County, Lighthouse of Oakland County, where I was a very active volunteer for 15 years. And I often planned things for their elderly people and for their children that were in their after school program. I planned an activity where all of the children got to make a treasure box. And one of our church members, uh, Al Woodworth, made about 22 wooden kits of pieces for the treasure boxes. And several men in the congregation, you'll recognize them here, um, worked with small groups of children. You can imagine 30 hammers going simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> the children uh, later um, painted them and uh, were very, very proud of them. It was a nice service project. At one point, uh, Lighthouse had new headquarters from the house-like original building to a uh, regular office-style building and they asked people to paint murals in them. And I was uh, assigned the visitor's waiting room for the mural that I worked on. This is where families, people, individuals would gather to wait for their appointments and to be served at Lighthouse. And my thought was to have, a, have lots of little details so parents and children could carry on a conversation about it while they waited. So we had the underwater fish and the boats and the animals in the lighthouse. Another major project was uh, yeah. each year there would be a major fundraiser with usually about 300 people attending and paying quite a hefty fee to be there that would be a major fundraiser for Lighthouse. And one year, France was the theme. And I copied six uh, Monet paintings. This one was um, eight feet by eight feet. Uh, the uh, Lily Pond at Giverny. That was a very special evening. There was a turnstile that people went through to uh, get into the area at the Bank of America's headquarters. The, the public doesn't get there, but the workers get there. And we turned it into a subway entrance, um, the big the tower and the metro sign at the top. We made a um, Eiffel Tower. The evening of the event was especially uh, noted because one of our committee members made 12 um, Madeline coats and hats, and we you know the 12 little girls in two straight lines. And Lori here, dressed as Miss Clavel, and led the little girls all around during the evening in between all the guests that were there. It created quite a, quite a sensation, and the little girls were just very proud of themselves. Now we move to Vista Maria in Dearborn Heights, and there are two people here who were very much involved in that, more than two people. Um, the Thorisons made the arrangements, I think, Kate, it, back then you made the first contact. And there were two rooms that were just plain rooms that were visiting rooms when families came to see their girls at uh, Vista Maria that were plain, and we were asked to decorate them. and. We had great fun with the African theme. Now look very closely at the neckties that people are wearing. You're going to see a picture in a few minutes of the origin of those neckties. And also here with us today um, is Sandy DeBicke, who's there in front of the giraffe. And note the table, uh, it has themes similar to the ones on the wall that the family or the siblings could sit at as they're visiting. 
Well, here we are, back, <laughs> right at home. <laughs> many, many uh, projects over the years have evolved. And here's one that dates back to Christmas hand in hand. Uh, um, there are people here that I think experienced Christmas hand in hand. In the uh, fireside room each year was a, a train room with various scenes and trains running around it. And this, this was the uh, tree that introduced guests to the train room. It, it's in one of our church members' train rooms to this day. Now, when Cindy Merton first came, she had a new vision for our Christian education department and what, what it could look like. One of the rooms that was decorated early on was the children's choir room. And that's what you're seeing here. Um, oh, sing to the Lord a new song and music notes and flowers. And above the door, inside the room is the phrase, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres with flowers beside it. And on the walls, there's a celestial orchestra with a um, orchestra director and with different clouds holding instruments in the sky. And that's Sarah Krug um, co-painted it with me. Pardon? Now we're outside the music area of the second floor. There's a room inside the corridor there that's a square room inside the building that's the Red Sea Cinema. And on a couple of the walls, all the books of the Bible are written book by book by book. And there are different types of books in the Bible that scholars know probably a whole lot better than I do or most people do. But there, there's a different type font for each of the groups of types of books in a different color. Inside the Red Sea Cinema, you see the parted waves and a scroll up at the front. Cindy was able to get these chairs from a theater that was going out of business in Flint, I think. And it's been well used ever since. And outside one wall of the Red Sea Cinema, is this mural of the life of Moses from the uh, bulrushes to coming down from the mount with the Ten Commandments tablet in his hand. Those of you who go upstairs when we're looking at this uh, mural that's about 36 feet long, be sure to look up at the ceiling. Not, not everyone has looked up at the ceiling. You'll, you'll see a little surprise up there. This uh, mural of the um, Pentecost is the most recent of things. It was added just a couple years ago when the Bloomfield Hills school children were learning about different religions. They visited different types of churches and mosques, and we needed one picture of Pentecost to tell the story of the Christian religion, and they asked me to paint another one. So. That was just a couple years old. Also in the upstairs corridor, you'll see this crucifixion uh, mural that's, that's recent. And here's one of the original murals, Moses and animals and the rainbow. These were based on the work of Tommy DePaula, a children's artist. I have a book over here of his. It actually it's a very special book because Cindy Merton contacted Tommy DePaula and told him about our project and got his permission to copy his paintings and then told him that one person particularly had been working hard on these and would he sign a book for her. So if you look at that book, you'll see a signature of Tommy DePaula to me, so it's special to me. Here's another one of his uh, 
inspired paintings, Jesus on his way to Jerusalem. You'll see if you go on the tour, uh, also this picture, which is in the preschool room of all different animals. I especially like the murals of the uh, monkey up at the top, of monkeys. Derby Middle School is a middle school here in Birmingham that has a curriculum that, uh, in which the students study Chinese. And uh, for uh, several years, the, they went to China. And of course, that was very special indeed. And the sponsor permitted parents and grandparents to go along also. So they really had a grand time. They were about to go in a few months, and they approached me and asked if I would work with the students and do some Chinese-themed things. So um, this picture is one of my all-time favorites. It's my saber on my, my screen saber on my computer. The pandas and these young ladies helped paint it. And this is pretty much uh, the whole group with the Great Wall of China painting that they did. At the end, when we were finished with the school murals, uh, they each got to paint a, a panda mural. The Franklin Church approached me about doing murals in their Sunday school rooms. And this was the first one at the base of the stairs, the Disciples Depot. And then there were trains, this 1840 train it commemorates the founding year of the Franklin Church and has a whole uh, string of cars, animals and people. And then there's a second one, and this one was the year we did this project, and it has all the books of the Bible being pulled by the train. This is the Old Testament car. Members of their church um, helped paint uh, murals. Now, Beaumont City in Royal Oak was a project of the hospital for a grant that um, they were getting. They needed to demonstrate that they were providing education and safety. So this was their uh, uh, a tribute to that. Um, and now, you recognize anybody? <laughs> We have some people here today that are in this picture. There were two requirements. It needed to have a Royal Oak police car and the hospital itself. So we worked away. We maybe should name the people here. Do you see yourself, Chris? <laughs> Wendy Cameron, Joanne Judy, Diane Burt, Edie Smith, and Elizabeth Snyder were all worked on this. And here you see the finished um, product. The uh, white picket fence has quite a story behind it. Um, tape was put on the white wall in the shape of the picket fence, and then the paint, the garden was painted right over it. And then the tape was removed, and every piece of tape had a beautiful flower picture on it. <laughs> and then we got the idea, hey, it'd be fun to wear them as neckties. So in the previous picture, the unusual neckties were the tape from the uh, picket fence. and we had to include the hospital in it too. So here we have Beaumont Hospital. Now, next senior center, it used to be called Basque. Maybe some of you are more familiar with Basque than next. But uh, they came and said, we, we'd like to have a mural and we'd like to have it be something about Birmingham. I was, I was first thinking about up north, maybe a lake scene or something. 
and then we got the idea, well, we do have a lake, we have Corton Lake. And they were pleased with that idea. And so we had a team of people doing Corton Lake, and this is it in progress. I'm holding the uh, prototype for the entire mural that's about 24 feet long. Now, you see the lake here. It started out kind of pure gray, and then the other colors were added. But just as we were beginning that, a woman came along and said, I know what that is. That's a whale. You're painting a whale. <laughs> and I hope she wasn't too disappointed when she <laughs> found out what it really was. And here you see the setup for part of the mural with uh, cattails and goldfinches. Midvale School shares the next program for seniors and the preschool program, and they share the gym. And the children come from their south end of the building to the gym and loved watching just what was going on as they were coming by and would stop and chat for a while and ask questions. Here's a section of the mural. The court, it has the two court and lake signs and um, bricks and tiles that you see half of there. And now you see the uh, entire panoramic view of the lake. And as we were painting it, people talked about seeing deer on the shore of the lake. And we added deer, which had originally been in the plan. This was dedicated to uh, the woman who had been director of Basque uh, for what, about 15 years. I mentioned that the building is shared by the preschool and the uh, adults, senior adults. And here you see a ceiling um, painting hanging down that has the two meeting at the bridge the children and the adults. Now we're going to look at the Midvale Early Childhood Center. I was approached, first of all, about this column that was there. I said, could you turn it into a tree? And I said, you know, I think we can go even farther than that and uh, propose that we have animals on it the rainbow colors on the seat. The bridge, the um, uh, branches up above have scenes on them that are monkeys on one side and um, monkeys and birds, tropical birds. And you see the um, gorilla there. Close up of the what might have been a tree trunk, but turned out to be much more than that. Here you see the uh, bridges at the top, branches at the top. And along the wall nearby, there are some animals, a parent-child theme, and elephant and child. The children really do enjoy these uh, animals. Baldwin Center is an agency in Birmingham that uh, provides wide-ranging services for um, needy people. They have lunch there every day for people. Our artists were able to join in the indigent people and have lunch there as we work there. Here we have a, one of our church members, Drew Zerba, painting animals. And here you see the whole um, length. It's about 60 feet long. And here you see the view looking down the hall, how, how it is that entire length. Again, uh, children were present during uh, some of our painting, and they were just thrilled to watch and, and to see 
unlike what happened at Focus Hope when I was painting a preschool room there and the children were in the room. And it happened there was a substitute that day. And one of the little boys was very concerned. Mrs. Jones is going to be so mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> Eleanor Josias and Father Cunningham came walking by while I was painting and she suggested we should have a squirrel in the tree. I did an apple tree through the year with spring, summer, fall, winter, and so the winter one has her squirrel in it. And here are some of the people that helped paint this uh, Baldwin Center one that you saw. And you'll recognize some church people. One of the rooms in the building that uh, I was asked to paint was a classroom, a meeting room, the board room. The board met there for their meetings. and. Um, I decided to make these lower um, cement blocks look like rocks and then paint flowers and animals and birds. This is a larger view of it. The first time the uh, board of directors came to the room to meet after this was completed, they stopped in their tracks and looked and were just amazed at it. They, pass that information along to me, which I appreciated. South Oak and Shelter, uh, many of us are familiar with because they would spend a year staying here for the week with mattresses and beds and eating breakfast and dinners here and being entertained here. And um, it was a special time for our congregation. Their office is on um, 12 Mile. They have merged within the past several years with Lighthouse of Oakland County. They wanted a way of recognizing their churches that serve their people. And they came up with the idea of having an apple tree with the name of a church on each apple. Not in pyramid form. They wanted to be sure about that, that there wasn't any misunderstanding that anybody was promoted more than anyone else. So I worked with uh, some uh, high school students to produce that tree up in their office building. And here you have the same idea of the uh, tree and the picket fence in their uh, rece receiving room, their re reception room. And you see Sandy DeBicke sitting over here at this table, who's here in the picture with me. We painted some of the side rooms, too, that were children's playrooms. Now, Grace Centers of Hope uh, is a very, very fine uh, service organization in Pontiac that uh, serves people that have crises in their lives and helps get them on a better path for their future with education and um, religious learning also. And here is the path, uh, the one wall that um, we did in the, one of their children's rooms. Here you see that same picture, but with people and children and toys in there. Note there's a, a monkey sitting on top of the uh, fire alarm there in the picture. <laughs> And one of the nice things that happened here was that I said to the administrators, now if you have any clients that um, would like to participate in this or, or that are artistic, I would welcome them. And they did. They, they sent, I think it was three or four women to work with us. And when they worked on the elephant. I kind of coached them about tinting the ears pink. And uh, I don't I think I have a picture of the big, huge ape that they... Uh, one of them did also. Camp Westminster is up in um, Houghton Lake area of Michigan. It's a long, about 75 years old now, camp for their uh, church children. And they asked me to come. Um, and here we have 
me working with uh, counselors in training to paint a huge backdrop for their stage. And, the wild animals that they see there. And there it is. They also needed their mailbox painted and they use cloth napkins so they keep track of which ones are used and which ones are clean. So they needed a clean napkin sign. Cornerstone School in Detroit is a well-regarded school for uh, poverty-level kids. Their parents must agree to be involved if they are enrolled in that school. Here we have a team of our folks from church painting their uh, theme, which is Galatians 5, the fruits of the Spirit. And we again have people here that worked on this. Uh, one of our f fine church members, Lloyd Royce, was very active in supporting this school and um, getting good publicity for it. The fruits of the Spirit include love, joy, peace, long-suffering, Patience is another word for that. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It was a real pleasure to be in that building and see the kids. They were so well-behaved and polite and smiling, and uh, it was a joy to see them. Among the other things that I've painted are uh, over 30 maps of the United States on school playgrounds, on the blacktops using highway marking paint. And uh, we have a neat system. I have a map on a grid with, a, with one inch squares. And then we have drawn on the blacktop three foot squares. And we transfer the line accurately from the one inch square to the three foot square and it comes out of perfect um, measurements. So here we have a few people starting to paint and uh, some more people still uh, working on drawing. And in one day, in about oh, six hours, we can finish it. And, uh, and people start out thinking, uh, I'm not so sure about this. I'm, I'm not artistic at all. And then they begin to see it evolve and then they're really pleased and uh, very enthusiastic about it. And most of them are parents of children that are students there. And we write their parents' name on the playground by the map so that they get credit for it and take pride in it. One teacher called, uh, sent me a note and said she had had her students studying the states. And as each student reported on his or her state, they stood on the state on the map and gave their report so the class had a real concept of where that state was. Also, uh, in some, at some buildings uh, specialized in doing Michigan. And one of my friends is a retired geography professor who feels very strongly that people should know the accurate borders of the state of Michigan. And most people don't. And if you look carefully at this map, you'll see the border. What you don't see is what's missing because it's the other half of the lake. Um, the other half belongs to, to Canada there. And uh, then there's the half of Western Lake Michigan that belongs to Illinois and Wisconsin and Minnesota uh, that we painted a different shade of blue. So um, we hope to have the uh, students in that elementary school understand that Michigan is much bigger, really, than you picture it because of the water. That, that's square footage that belongs to the state of Michigan also. On some of the uh, playgrounds, we had 
a request to do a conflict resolution circle. And that's what this is. If the kids are in some kind of a conflict, the playground people can take them over here and say, well, how could we deal with this? What might be a better way to deal with this? And they can pick a way and um, develop some skills in resolving conflicts. Now, this is something brand new, just a couple weeks old. Rosie, would you like to say something about this? Oh, yes. Um, this particular group um, is a foundation that was developed by Mark Ross. He was a member here at one time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have 15 schools that he wanted to make sure that uh, Talented Schools had children who were being taught new skills. Uh, either soft skills as well as hard skills, and that they were introduced to different uh, colleges and also different programs like financial um, and new skills, and we would take them to lunch every day, and they would work from um, June through the middle of August, and we would pay them $15 an hour. And we always tried to introduce them to different things. So I said to Diane, uh, I think the kids would love to do some painting. So Diane uh, said yes, and there she is, <laughs> teaching our kids how to paint. They were, um, when she left, they thought they were really, you know, Van Gogh or somebody, but <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were really happy with their products that they did. And then at the end of the session, the program, uh, we have like a showcase, and I didn't get a chance to make pictures of it, but they put all of their pictures on the table for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. And at that showcase, we usually have Mark there, but he was, he had to do a presentation for the Cadillac car in, New, in Chicago, so he couldn't come. But he's normally there to meet all the kids, and uh, there are other VPs there, and the kids really do enjoy it. And we have 14 schools, and they're all in metropolitan Detroit, as well as Flint and Pontiac. Melvindale, um, Harper Woods, East Point, um, just all around, Warren, and we have all these schools, and we love the kids, and they really do enjoy the program. They, <laughs> they, they were very nice kids. They were worked hard and were attentive, and there was a little joking around with the young man that thought he was going to be the next, was it Van Gogh? <laughs> It was, it was a great experience. This is a women, infant, and children office in Detroit that uh, handles food uh, programs. And the, just, these are just a few miscellaneous things here. I was on a, a cruise around South America and somehow just decorated the uh, itinerary for the day and ended up being asked to just do it every day. So. <laughs> Every day I did a little picture, picture on it. One of the places that I was able to get to in South America was Iguazu Falls. And since this was about art, I thought, well, I'll show this. I was actually making a sketch there at the falls. Um, he, that shows the falls in the background, but it's a little hard to ascertain. I did a mural somewhat like this Let's Read one for Alcott School and was asked to do something for Whitman School in Pontiac and I thought, well, we could do something similar, but this time I came up with a different idea of involving the kids. So every single kindergarten, first and second grader painted a flower on this mural. And the photo shows the kids um, dipping their sponges in paint and then pressing them on so they could each be very proud that they had helped make that mural. At Elcott School, I've done several different things, but one thing was to uh, make these paintings to decorate the library, media center. And I chose African-American uh, characters, a couple of them, and then some popular children's characters. You, recognize 
um, Madeline and uh, uh, some other famous ones. Now, next we moved to Kirk in the Hills Church where I was again asked to participate in a painting project. They have a room called the Garden Room that had this furniture in it that I decorated uh, chairs and tables. When we had SOS here, the South Oakland Shelter, I got to know a mother and a particular little child. Oh, sorry here. Uh, and the mother told me how the child wanted wanted a dollhouse. She just had her heart set on a dollhouse. And then that, during that same week, learned that the mother had been saving her money to buy the dollhouse, and she went to get it, and it was really poor quality. She was so disappointed, and she didn't buy it. And it meant she didn't have enough money to get a better dollhouse. And that made quite an impression on me. And I um, started work getting a dollhouse and was able to get this dollhouse. Um, I think it was at a garage sale and painted it. And um, the SOS people moved to a different church the next week and it happened. I knew someone at that church and told her the story and she got involved and somehow got the word out to a woman who was a bank worker who bought $250 worth of furniture for the dollhouse, the, every, every room of the dollhouse. And uh, my friend from the other church and I went and delivered the dollhouse. The family had arrived in a house um, after being homeless for, for some time. And we delivered the dollhouse and they were excited. And then we started one by one handing them boxes to open of the furniture and, and included were people. There was a family of little little dolls and the, uh, Maria and her sister started playing with them and I tried to explain that this Maria was going to share it but it was really hers you know so try to clarify from the beginning that situation and um, they just loved them and then while we were still there they started playing hide and seek with the family and <laughs> hiding the children and having different people look for different people. They were into it uh, enthusiastically. Now, Skyline, near and dear to the hearts of many in our church since it was founded, um, oh, it's, now it's almost 70 years ago. Um, a few pictures here. Uh, I had painted this some years ago and my granddaughter had helped uh, paint this lobby area. And we had three people painting the bathhouses, both the men's and the women's, boys and girls, um, with themes of fish and having fun and great fun. We see Joyce Uselak and Elizabeth Snyder here painting. It was great fun. Joyce sang for us and with us as we were painting. We just really had fun. This is a tabletop that uh, shows the birds that are visible at Skyline. Just recently in April, there was a work day at Skyline and people came for the whole weekend if, if they could. And they were carpenters and just doing work, changing fences, um, painting. And I volunteered to make a monarch butterfly that could be used to put behind people, whether they were little tiny preschoolers or big adults but would be suspended and it could be behind the person so it looked like they had wings. So we started out with paint, uh, cutting plywood and undercoating and painting and this is what we ended up with. <laughs> and it was really popular. People were already using it and taking pictures with it and it hopefully enhanced the life of the campers this summer. Well, you've been a very good, attentive audience here. <laughs>